There are some places within us, within our, our, our being, our personality, that God has equipped your spouse to help you to mend or to heal in those different areas. Why are you laughing at me? Because it's great because when it comes to technology, like I you are feeling in my gaps no right gap now. You because you uh because <laughs> you I never you know, know how to keep my phone from you, you don't yeah so yeah. anyway This is Marriage Matters. This is a podcast where we talk about all things relationship. Um, for those of you who are joining us for the very first time, my name is Glenn Coleman, and I'm joined as always by my beautiful wife, Tanya Coleman. That's hey who guys. she is, and we're the Coleman's. Uh, and so tonight, you know, I wanted to talk about something um, that's kind of, uh, I guess, um, well, it, it actually was spurred on um, by. Um, something that I'd heard in the conversation that we had with a friend of ours. So I want to start with this though. So um, there's a movie, uh, probably one of my, I always say this, but it is it's one of my favorites as far as like a comedy, mm -hmm. uh, but it's Jerry Maguire, right? The movie Jerry Maguire. Yes, I love that movie. Uh, and good. there's a scene, the scene, the, the, um, the scene to end all scenes. Uh, that's what I'm saying. You can see that right there. I know. I don't know. Well, you want me just to just end this? Yes, yeah, so I'd rather end it than look okay. like that the whole time, looking at our shoulders. Okay. Um. So I don't even know if I could do that. Uh, I'll remove it. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, guys. But sorry, Instagram that is not letting us be great. Instagram is not letting us be great. Okay. So. All right. So anyway, for those of you who are still watching this on Facebook, <laughs> <laughs> um. So the, Jerry Maguire. So there's a scene in Jerry Maguire. It's, a, it's the scene that end all scenes, right? It's when Jerry comes back to get his wife or whatever, and he comes in, and you know, that's the one where she says, um, she says, you had me at hello. hello. You yes. had me at hello. I can remember being in the movie at a park theater. Unfortunately, I won't watch it with you, but it was, it was a day. But anyway, that's another story. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I still got the guy. Hey, you still got the guy. But there's a, there's a line in there. He tells, he tells her, he says, you complete me. And where we really don't, that's something that we really don't as ascribe to. Mm -hmm. Is that as ascribe? Is that a word? Ascribe yes, it is. to is that we don't believe in, you know, you complete me mm -hmm. um, and, and completing each other because that's just like a lot of pressure to put on someone mm -hmm. um, to say that you make me whole. And there's only one person. Uh, that can make you whole, and that is God, right? Yeah, that's that's absolutely, that God. Absolutely. Um, that's all in the place. But there is something to be said about complimenting mm -hmm. um, your spouse. Yes. Maybe not complete, mm -hmm. but I do think that we were designed to compliment, compliment one, another. one another. It's like peanut butter and chocolate, right? They compliment one another. I thought you were going to say peanut butter and jelly. That too. Okay. But, <laughs> but we compliment each other, right? And so that that whole concept of, of complimenting uh, each other, and and so there's a couple of concepts or a couple of things that I've heard, you know, in hearing other people's conversations, hearing other people speak. So Jimmy Evans, another uh, Jimmy and Karen Evans, Evans, another couple that we follow. Um, we um, there with uh, Marriage Today. Marriage Today. Um, but we were at a, a conference, at the EXO conference, and he said something that really stood out to me. He said, you know, marriage is designed to heal you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. You know, and I, when he first said it, I was like, oh, okay, that's, that's a pretty interesting concept. That's, that's pretty great. Um, so what, you know, and I kind of, kind of, I never did dig into it, but what, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. You know, it, if I said that to you, marriage is designed to heal you. Mm -hmm. what, what does that mean to you? To me, it means that um, marriage, um, being in that level of relationship, okay. in that um, level of commitment and um, intimacy, it 
fills the hole, so to speak, or fills okay. the gap, so to speak. So I, if you've been watching this podcast for any amount of time, you know that I love to use the example about the um, transparency sheets, right? Mm-hmm. Back mm-hmm. in the day when, you know, we were in the classroom and the teacher takes the transparency with the questions and it, it does not have the answers. There are blanks in the, in the sentence. And so once she goes over the material or you take the test, she comes back and she places the questions and then she places the answers on top of the questions and the answers fill in those blanks. Mm -hmm. To me, that was the literal visual that I got when he made that statement, that it's like there are some places within us, within our, our, our being, our personality that God has equipped your spouse to help you to mend or to heal in those different areas. Why are you laughing at me? Because it's great because when it comes to technology, like I you are feeling in my in gaps those right gaps now. you because you uh because <laughs> you I just, never you know, know how to keep my phone from you, you don't yeah so anyway stuff, so. um so so yeah because when you were saying that I was gonna come back I was gonna ask you the question well would that be considered completing but I think the way so I guess here's here's the here's the the, I don't know the 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 caveat. Okay. If you will, that's, that's, the, only your, word, that's your word. That's the only <laughs> word I can think of. But it's not what what's the difference between you completing a person mm-hmm. and marriage healing? And you know, you use the example of the transparency transparency sheets. Mm-hmm. I, I see that like as filling in the gaps, mm-hmm. filling in the holes. Mm-hmm. Here's the difference. I don't do that for Tanya. Mm-hmm. I create the construct for Tanya to do that for herself. Exactly, exactly. It is the perfect grounds for the areas that need to be healed or complete to be revealed. Yeah, it's kind of like you know going to the gym. You know, they it's it's the place, the the environment where you can uh, all of the equipment that you need to get a a good physique mm-hmm. is in that gym. Right. And that's what marriage, it, it, it provides the environment mm-hmm. for you to grow. You know, I was talking to uh, a young man and uh, he had just recently gotten married. And he was just telling me, he's like, you know, I really don't know. He's like, I've never been in this position before. He's like, I've been single all my life. He's like, and I've never really dated. He's like, I never really dated like that, you know, mm-hmm. like in a serious relationship. And he was like, it's kind of hard for me to figure this out because I'm so used to um, all I, all, only person I had to think about was me. I don't have any kids. Sure. I'm, I've been on my own. So the only person I had to consider was me. Mm-hmm. And that's a great example of how marriage provides the, the groundwork or the environment for you to grow because to grow in, in, in order for you to grow in selflessness, you have to be put in, in the positions to uh, for for selfishness to be a, tem- a to be a temptation, right? Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, so that's what I think Jimmy meant when he said, you know, marriage heals you. In other words, marriage allows you. Marriage it will bring to you, or just being if you're in a committed relationship, or just any relationship, really. Because even I find, you know, we talk about our kids a lot on this show, mm-hmm. but my kids bring some things to, to the surface <laughs> in my character that nobody else uh, can, can bring to the surface. That's you know, I, I'm going to pause Amen. right here and just talk about, everybody talked about, you know, there was the exchange between Kurt Franklin and, and, his, his, son. and his son. Mm-hmm. And, you know, everybody had their opinion about <laughs> what Kurt, if for those of you who don't know, Kurt Franklin, basically he, he cursed his son out. Mm-hmm. And it's recorded it and posted to social media. And, and my take on this is I'm not saying that what he said was right, but what I am saying is I understand the situation. Mm-hmm. And, and I understand that like kids, your kids can press your buttons like nobody else can. And so I'm not saying that, you know, he should have, but I understand why. Mm-hmm. I'll just put it that way. Mm-hmm. But my point is that. Again, and, and Kirk mentioned it. He said, you know, we're in therapy and, mm-hmm. and he's like, I'm still growing. And, and that just it, it just brings that to the surface and says, oh, I need that's something that I need to work on. Right. Um, and so that's what being in a relationship 
um, is, is all about. And every relationship in your life is designed to teach you something. And I truly believe that you can't go to the next level in that relationship until um, you have you've learned what you need to learn at this level. I'm, let me I'm, let me put on my preacher hat. Amen. I feel I feel a word, the yeah, word of the word Lord. Come on, but no, come on, it's like some of you are not have not gotten to the next level in your life is because or in those relationships. Whether that relate, I'm thinking of the, your work relationship, mm-hmm. maybe with you and your manager or you in this company. Mm-hmm. Maybe the reason why you hadn't got to the next level is because you had learned what you needed to learn on this level. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, you know, you got to pass the fourth grade to get to the fifth grade, exactly. right? And so that's what I, I believe what marriage does for us is it brings those things to the surface. So that's what, when we say it, it heals us, mm-hmm. that's what it's doing. It's allowing, right. it's allowing us to work on the areas where we're like. Yeah, it's like a sifter. You know, mm-hmm. if, you, um, if you cook, if you bake and, you know, um, we all, I was taught when I was learning to bake that you sift the flour and you sift, you know, all of the um, the rising agents and the salt and things that you put in the flour. You sift that so that what's left is light and mm-hmm. fluffy and pure and all of the hard particles and things impurities are left in the sifter. And mm-hmm. so that's what a close relationship like marriage does for our hearts is it, it, it sift, it sifts us. Mm -hmm. If I am only in communion with myself, if I'm only in relationship with myself or me and God, you know, at home and, you know, because your coworkers and um, schoolmates, family members who you don't live with um, those relationships are different, you Mm -hmm. know, Um, The way that we handle, you know, contention and things in those relationships is going to be much different from the people that we are literally doing life with Mm -hmm. um, from our spouse. And so if I am a single person and I'm living alone, a lot of those things that come out in marriage, they have no way of being exposed. Mm -hmm. You know, rather it be selfishness or um, my lack of controlling my spending or, you know, whatever it is. Um, those things, nobody's there to call, call it out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so in marriage, it is the perfect opportunity for those things to be brought to the surface. And that's why it is a sacrifice Mm -hmm. to, to be married. It is a sacrifice to live, um, as one with another person, you Mm -hmm. know, because there are things about us that are going to be brought to the surface. The, The issue is, that oftentimes we don't focus on what's happening inside of me. We focus on our spouse, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at what they're doing wrong and that, you know, he hurt my feelings or how he spoke to me or how he behaved. And we're not looking at Mm -hmm. what's my part in all of this, or even, you know, what is it that is causing um, him to present himself or show up um, the way that he's showing up to me. You know, mm-hmm. what? what's my part in that? You know, it's not just one of us um, that's having the issue here. We're now married. So we're now a team. Mm-hmm. You know, we are one now in, um, in spirit. We are now one, but mm-hmm. we are working toward manifesting operating in oneness, okay. if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm glad you kept going. I heard I, I just that when you said that, I want to get something down there. Okay. But so yeah, that's that's absolutely right. So that kind of brings me to my next point. The next conversation that kind of brought all this together for me mm-hmm. was we were having a conversation with one of our friends, um, Mark Dunwa, mm-hmm. over at the kitchen table. Uh, shout out to kitchen table. Hey, hey, TKT. Um, and um, but he was talk. We were talking about marriage and relationships, mm-hmm. and he said something to. I can't remember what he said verbatim, but he said something to the fact to the point of that. The thing that frustrates you the most about your spouse may be the area that you need to grow in. Mm-hmm. And he said that your spouse is the perfect person mm-hmm. to help you to grow in those areas. Mm-hmm. So he was saying that it's like, um, well, he, here's the way I took it. It's like whenever there's something that frustrates you about your spouse. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we're not we're, we're not talking about abuse or nothing like that. Right. We're not talking about somebody right. having an affair 
Yes, of course that should frustrate you. Sure. You know, I'm not talking. I'm talking about like the little, the, the little things that, or not just the little things, but it's just the the things that maybe the way you think differently, you mm -hmm. you process differently. Mm -hmm. But the way I interpreted what he said was, you have one of two choices when there's conflict in your marriage. Number one, you can grow, yeah, or you can be frustrated. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it's it's up to you to choose. Um, how you're going to allow that to happen. And I know that, you know, it's, it's, it's so, I'm not going to say it's easy when you're being frustrated, when you, um, when you told someone to do a thing or ask, not told, but ask someone to do something multiple times and it's still not where you want it to be or and I'm trying to think of a better, we're going to get into some examples, some personal examples of ourselves. She didn't know this yet, but I'm going to throw some out there. No, it's this stuff we talked about already. Oh, I okay. think, I don't know. Oh, no. uh, I'm good. I'm right. But, but it's so, it's like, it's, it's so you have a, it, I know it's hard in that moment to say, you know what, I'm going to grow from that. Mm -hmm. The tendency is when we're faced, when we're faced with, with, um, what's the word I used? <laughs> Contention. Mm -hmm. We we don't uh, take it as an we don't look at it as uh, as a compliment, or, you know, a, a way to compliment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In other words, uh, in the areas that I'm weak in, you're strong in, right, or right. areas that you don't have a problem with, I have a problem mm -hmm. with, right? Mm -hmm. um, so um, I know it's hard and it's difficult in the heat of the moment mm -hmm. to look at it that way, but I'm, I'm, what I want you to understand is that takes practice and it's just, just like any other skill you can learn how to look at situations from a different um uh, angle, angle perspective. Or, or perspective and i think a lot of times what stops us is that that what we could come into a marriage with is that self having and having the need to defend yourself mm -hmm. and the need to having to be right that's right there is what stops us, I believe, from growing from situations. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think um, that that need to defend ourselves, I mean, because I find myself doing it, you mm -hmm. know. Um, we both do. Everybody. Yeah, everyone does. Or your need to prove your rightness gets in the way of focusing on what's happening in the marriage, what's mm -hmm. happening in the relationship. You yeah. know, um, I say a lot that I I look at the marriage almost as an entity of its own, mm -hmm. you know, and so we have to protect the, the, the sacredness of the entity mm -hmm. of the marriage. And so therefore, that means that I have to make some adjustments. Mm -hmm. That means that I have to look inwardly at myself and see how I'm showing up in this marriage and how I am showing up for you as my spouse in the marriage. Yeah. You know, that means that I have to do, do some growing and I have to do some changing, um, some adjusting, some accepting of you, of who you are, mm -hmm. you know, completely and fully and wholly and embracing those things, even the things that may get on my nerves sometimes, you know. I don't um, get on your nerves. <laughs> Even the things that may get, on, get on my nerves. Did I get on your nerves? Did I just get on your did, did No, I, you did not get on my nerves there, but I'm like, okay, yeah, you know better. We have our moments. And I know that I get on yours too. So, but yeah. Okay. So we tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but seriously, we um it's it's being able to self-assess. It's being able to look inwardly. It's being able to, even when your when your spouse is getting on your nerves, so to speak, or mm -hmm. they're not following through with something that you guys have discussed before, take a step back and look at your spouse's heart. Mm -hmm. You know, and realize that they they love you that you know they're there for you and maybe they need a little bit more grace to get to where you all are needing them to be mm -hmm. if that makes sense and i think i may have said this even last week but mm -hmm. one question that i've learned 
And again, this took me practice, but when I'm frustrated in with Tanya um, or my kids or my manager or a coworker or whomever, mm -hmm. the one question that I've learned to ask myself is why does this bother me so much? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. And I understand that maybe you should be bothered by it, but it, it, there are certain things it's like, why does, why when she does that? Why? And, and, and here's what I'm finding in my life and in personal growth is most of my frustrations are really not, they're, they're my frustrations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're about you. They're not about they're, me. They're exactly, not about that, the kids. That's what they're you not said. about. The it's workers. about even you know, mm -hmm. even with you know, I, even like we we'll say with the Kirk Franklin situation. And, and I'm I am in no way saying that I'm I could have did that better or because I don't know I may have did the same thing in mm -hmm. that situation. But I just remember I, I know like after I've had a a and here's the other thing. Some of you criticized him, but you got your own way of, mm -hmm. of uh, you know, I was listening to another. Locking uh, and stonewalling. I, yeah, I was listening to another pastor. I'm not going to say his name. All I don't want to do. put, his, put his business out. I, me and Kirk who like that. You know, I can, not not really. But, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't uh, but no, um, but he was saying how, you know, he, he him and his son got into something and he, he threw a, a, some juice up mm -hmm. against the, you know, and I'm like, so is that that's that. Is that better? Is that a lesser <laughs> offense than, than cursing them out? I right, mean, because right. they're both. What's at the root of that? And at the root of that, even with this pastor that I'm talking about, hearing him talk, the root of it was not that he was. And this may sting a little bit. And even with our kid, I know for, well, for me, mm -hmm. the root of it is not that I'm so I am concerned about them. But the root of it is I don't want to be made the fool. Mm. Mm -hmm. So again, it that's, really that's all true. goes back to mm -hmm. me. It, I'm the one with the, it, I'm the one with the insecurity problem because I don't want you acting that way. I don't want you saying those things. Not because I want better for you, but because I'm I don't want you to make me look bad out in public. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you know, um, <laughs> you know how your mom used to tell you, uh, what's the, how they say, like, you know, make sure you got no clean underwear when you mm -hmm. leave here because mm -hmm. if you get in a wreck, right. Forget the fact that you may have life in, life altering <laughs> injuries, right? I don't want them to be saying, you know, that, that's Lena Maybar right there right. with them dirty underwear. I'm like, <laughs> and like I always say, if I get in the accident that bad, it don't matter. I could have had on clean underwear, right. but they may not they be, may not, they right. may not be dirty after the. I mean, they may be dirty after the fact. But anyway, my point is, a lot of those frustrations have nothing to do with. Uh, look, she said yes. <laughs> <laughs> they have nothing to do with your spouse or the other person. It has everything right. to do with you. And even though, like I always say this, yes, you may have a right to be, you know, fresh. And they feel are, how you are feel. yeah, you have a right to feel how you mm -hmm. feel. But my, my thing is, is, is like, do you like feeling that way? Mm -hmm. And living that way, how has that served you? Right. Up, up, up onto this point in right. your life, mm -hmm. right? So I've learned to ask myself that question: Why are you? Why are you so angry about this? And so I'm learning to look within to really get to the root of why I'm feeling this way, mm -hmm. why I'm thinking this way, and why does it frustrate me so much when she does, you know, certain things? Mm -hmm. You know, is is but at the, at the end of the day, I learned that a lot of times it's me, it's it's mm -hmm. not you, and I'm the one that needs to to make the shift. Mm -hmm. You know, because and and here's the other thing, the, the 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 thing about so much of this stuff, especially like the little nitpicky mm -hmm. frustration things, we don't even we don't even voice that to our spouses. Right. Sometimes. We just feel we, upset about it yeah. or we don't like it. And so we we never say, you know, to them, I don't like when mm -hmm. you use pine salt because I hate the smell of it. It reminds mm -hmm. me of, you know. Luckily, I don't, use, I don't use pine sauce. No, no, I just that just came from. Oh, okay. We do not have pine sauce at all was, in our house because I don't like the smell I of thought it. You were bent. <laughs> no, not at all. But you know, it's things like that that you know you keep buying, you know, whatever kind of soap, and I I don't like it. Or you know, you keep you cook this and it's too spicy, but you never said anything. Mm -hmm. You know, or you use my car, you bring it home, and it's. 
at a quarter of a tank. Why didn't you stop and fill it up? Now I have to fill it up tomorrow. You know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. So, so are you going to be allow yourself to be complimented mm -hmm. by your spouse? Complimented with an E. Mm -hmm. I, that's something I learned today. I didn't know yeah. that compliment with an E. I thought it was like when you say, you're so pretty. Mm -hmm. That's a compliment. And then I compliment you. In other words, we work well together. But today I found out that Compliment with an I mm -hmm. is the one where you say you're so pretty. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And so, I mean, I learned something new. Mm -hmm. Just doing research for the show. Look yeah. at that. Look at God. Look at God. <laughs> Education. But now the, the sad thing is in every email and all the other stuff I've ever done all my life, I probably was spelling compliment wrong. Spell check probably helped you out, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. That's important. Know. So anyway, <laughs> so so what area, and we've talked about this before on the podcast that I want to kind of talk about is our career differences okay and how we approach uh our career which kind of leads into how we approach money mm -hmm. how we approach dreaming and all those type of things mm -hmm. um so some most of you uh, if you watch this this show we always talk about um you know like how tanya just has this she's had what you what we said five we've got a five four, four career four. For not He's trying to give me an extra not <laughs> not jobs careers like total totally different not some of them kind of went together but they're, they're, they but, have all bled into one another but she's switched careers mm -hmm. you know and for me I mean I've had a couple of different careers but it's like my whole outlook on life is or has been in the past that I want stability. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is my personality. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm an Enneagram five, you know, um, so I like stability. Um, I I don't like I, I, I can deal with change, but I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> and, and some of that has to do with, you know, like I said, is my personality. Some of it has to do with. Uh, my upbringing and all of these things are it's stuff that happens to us and it's we don't even realize that it happens mm -hmm. you know like uh, we joked about this is like I've lived in pr pretty much the same house growing up all my life mm -hmm. and we moved one time mm -hmm. and when we moved we literally moved next door <laughs> that's no literally to the house next door oh. Okay, so, so I'm laughing because my story is completely so, different. So for me, it's like I hate moving. You know, mm -hmm. I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to move. I want to be. You know, I remember when we bought the house that we we're in. Now we're looking for this house, and and I'm looking at, and all the house, the house that we're looking for. I had all these check marks, and Tanya was like, "Bay, we don't have to live in this house for the rest of our life. So it doesn't have to, you know, me." But in my mind, I'm like, "This is the last house we ever gonna purchase." And I'm like that with, with vehicles. This is the last vehicle, you know. So I mean, and those of you who know know me, you know I will keep a vehicle until I can no longer keep it anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but again, that's my right. I'm, I'm stable. So right. Tanya, on the other hand, tell kind of tell well, your side. Well, I am. Um, I come from a military background. My mm -hmm. mom was in the military. She married. My stepdad was in the military, and so we moved often. You know, every year, two years. Um, we were moving to a different state. Um, oh, let me let me throw one more thing in there. Yes. Because when you said that, you said like my father worked for the same company mm -hmm. for I think 30, 30 something years mm -hmm. till he retired. Right. So again, just kind of the, my my story, my my mm -hmm. what 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 we call that my my your, story. Your um, I forget now. Anyway, but yeah. I just want to throw that in there yeah. too. So we moved often um, due to the military. And even after no longer being a military family, um, my mom still moved, you know, quite a bit. And so I think I shared this before that before I graduated high school, I went to when I look at kindergarten to 12th grade, I went to 13 different schools. That's a lot for any person. Um, and of course it had, it had its sacrifices, um, you know, as far as the stability of friendships and um, academics and all of those different things, but there were also some great benefits. I did have some really great experiences traveling and living 
um, in different states among different cultures and things like that. Um, so there were some benefits to that. But what I've learned um, in my later adult life is that I don't have issue with change. You know, like you said, you know, um, now I do want stability, but my stability that I'm talking about is more of stability within my marriage, stability within my family. Um, but I'm okay with making a move as far as where we live or, um, obviously <laughs> changing different careers or what have you. Um, that doesn't bother me as much. Mm -hmm. I, I am more willing to take that risk to get to where I feel God is taking me on my journey. Okay. So here's, I'm going to ask you this question. So what has frustrated you mm -hmm. with my inability to be flexible? Mm -hmm. And you just put that out there, huh? And what have, how has it caused you to grow? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So I can speak from even when we were married earlier on, you know, I wanted to move. Like I was over Lake Charles pretty quickly um, after, you know, graduating college and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but we were, we were planted, we were planted in the church, we were, you know, serving and doing all those things. And you, I mean, didn't even budge on the idea. It was like, yeah, but what if this, 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 and this, and we're doing this. And it was like, you didn't budge, but it caused me to say, you know what, plant your feet and be all in here and just trust God for what is to come. You mm -hmm. know, maybe later on in life, um, things will change. And so I did just that. I planted my feet and, you know, served wholeheartedly and did, you know, what I felt I needed to do for my family and for my marriage. Um, but it did teach me to, I guess, stay put, so to speak, you mm -hmm. know, um, it also helped me to see that I, like, you know, everyone hasn't had the same experience as you, but, I could ben I could benefit from watching how committed you are and were to um, your family and to this area of the world, so to speak, and what you're doing here. And so I can see the benefits of that. And actually, being becoming a part of your family has taught me, you know, to really value that more. But because because we move so much, those tight, close knit relationships, you know that I see with your family members, we don't necessarily have, like we can literally go for years without seeing, you know, family members, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so I've learned and value a lot of that, mm -hmm. you know, from being married to you for almost 20 years. Yeah. So, and I want to say this too, we're not saying either one is right or wrong. Right. What we're just saying is that, that we're different. We have different experiences. Mm -hmm. We come from different backgrounds. And these are the things that could cause frustration in your relationships, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Any fr you didn't say anything for any frustration. Oh, I didn't say any frustrations. Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe there's not. You know, I don't no, know. No, there, there. I mean, if I'm honest, there has been some frustrations where you know I feel I have felt like you were unwilling to change or either can even consider anything outside of the world that we know right now. Mm -hmm you know, or at that time. Mm -hmm. um, and that there are so many opportunities, you know, out there that, you know, we can offer to our kids and, you know, to ourselves and all of these different things. So there have been moments of frustration, um, but I love you more than the thought of the adventure or whatever that is, somewhere else or the experiences. Um, and so, like I said, you know, if, if it's God's plan or if it's Glenn's plan, you know, I'm in it with you. I will follow you wherever okay. or stay put wherever. Okay. <laughs> so I guess for me on my side, you know, um, I'll start, you know, again with, with maybe the frustration mm -hmm. that, Again, knowing how grew, like I said, you know, my father working for the same company year mm -hmm. after year, building uh, um, a financial st 
stability, if mm -hmm. you will, at that company, uh, having a pension, mm -hmm. uh, 401k. And these are all things that my father talked mm -hmm. to me a lot about, you know, about, mm -hmm. you know, building that. And, I have another one. I'm going you know, finish. And um, sometimes I felt like just when I thought we were, it's like, okay, <sighs> mm -hmm. I can kind of relax. And, mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, you're going to, it's like, oh, I want to do this now. I'm like, okay, um, all right. I'm, but I'm, I'm going to hold it down. And sometimes I think it, it, it caused me to be even more, um, want to be more secure, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Um, so that's, I guess that's some of the frustration mm -hmm. that I've experienced is like, you know, when I think we're, um, you know, like I said, we things, especially like financially, okay, whew, right. things we're, are we're good, we're leveling right. off and, mm -hmm. And then it's like, I want to do this. I want to go back to school. And I'm like, okay, all right, well, you know, mm -hmm. all right. So, um, so that's maybe uh, the frustration and maybe not getting to that um, so-called um, uh, ideal mm -hmm. uh, family life, mm -hmm. if you will, mm -hmm. but the way it's caused me to grow is to realize that there's so much more to life, mm -hmm. you know, and to not be, not to settle mm -hmm. for just what's always been and right. what, you know, I mean, if that worked for my dad, well, great, but that should be a foundation. In other words, my dad did that for me. Sure. My dad worked that way and my mom worked that way. Mm -hmm. So that way I could be, mm -hmm. you know, I don't have to do that. I, I can pursue my dreams. And that's why I think I'm, I tell our girls, I'm so adamant about, you know, I want them to not be worried about, you know, providing. I'm like, I want you to follow your passion. What are right. you passionate about? Mm -hmm. So I guess that's what ca it's, it's caused me to grow. And it's also caused me to understand that my loyalties lie with my family. Oh, that's it. You're going where I was going. So that's what I, you, you know, you taught me through that. It's like, I don't have to be loyal to a job. I don't have to be loyal to um, a career. I don't have to be even in ministry. I, my loyalty should not be with a ministry. Mm -hmm. It should be to God and to my family. Mm -hmm. And the minute that I feel that in any of those areas where, um, uh, I'm no longer pleasing God or mm -hmm. in the will of God, if you will, mm -hmm. in that area or in, on my job or anywhere, right. then my loyalties don't lie with that company. Mm -hmm. Then my loyalties lie with my family. So if there is a better opportunity, right. you know, whether that's better in financially, whether that's better in just a better city, mm -hmm. if that's better opportunities, whatever it is, then I owe it to my family to make that that move and make that decision. Mm -hmm. So that's one way I've, I've grown. And again, this is just a great example of how we could have allowed those frustrations to um, to hinder us, right? Or to, to to come to come to confrontation or contention, right? Or we could say, you know what? Let's grow. And I mean, you said something this morning. I was like, wow, that's pretty neat. How you said you said you talked about restricting, and you was like, I don't like to be restricted. He was like, I don't even like that on my job. No, when people start trying to, you know, right. hold it's me into a, to me. I can't be you creative. know, yeah, yeah. And he's like, I don't like that, you know. And I'm like, hold me to the, hold me to the standard, hold me, you know, because that's just my personality, <laughs> right. you know. Right. Um. So, but again, being that, and again, I'm not saying that we've never let those frustrations come out at each other, or mm -hmm. we've never spoken neg negative, negative, negatively to each other. But I think for the most part, we're learning how to allow, we're, we're allowing each other to be stretched by each other. Yeah, yeah. I was, I wanted to go back to this because this is something um, that like with you that used to be really frustrating to me. It's not so much, so, uh, not so much anymore, but I felt like, you know, for a long time uh, when we were younger in marriage and younger in years, um, that you were super loyal to jobs and entities and people and things like that, that you, to me, you did not see your own value and your own work. Mm. And like, I will often say to you things that you would do for free. And I mean, working 
all wee hours of the night, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like, listen, there is, it should be a price, an invoice, because this is, this is your talent, your gift, mm -hmm. your skill, your energy and all these different things. And so that was your, I guess, loyalties and wanting to be a good person and wanting to help, you know, which is a great, wonderful thing. However, there has to be a balance. And I know mm -hmm. now you've realized that. Yeah. Um, but I, I still, cause even, even today we were talking, uh, and when you know, of course, when it came time to like the price, which I don't think we charge a lot. No, we know, don't charge a lot at all. But right? it's like when it was like Not the, what we should. how much I was like, oh, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. I don't right. say it. Right. Let me just send you the paperwork. Just read it on the paper. I don't want to tell you how much. But that's still some areas that I'm working. And right. you caused me to grow mm -hmm. in that area to realize that I am valuable. And it's okay that I don't have to. Um, it's okay for me to put a value to mm -hmm. my services because it is valuable. It is valuable. And, and you make, also taught me that people is people will use you mm -hmm. as much as you allow them to. Mm -hmm. So that's that's you know. Now I know that we might kind of get into some other areas, right? Um, but um, so that was just something that I wanted to bring to the table. And now that we we are older um, and have more life experiences, you know, I see how you have evolved and are evolving out of that and recognizing your worth and your value and learning learning to teach other people your worth and your value mm -hmm. rather than be on your job or things that you do outside of your job mm -hmm. you know which is super important to me because you know I've always seen you as this really talented gifted you know smart person that can do almost anything you place a task in front of Glenn and he can he'll get it done you know, um, and you know, you you deserve more than what I've seen you get in the past. So, mm -hmm. well, anyhow, so yeah, so <laughs> so yeah, so um, let me make sure I got all my. Uh, so yeah, I think we we hit all these points. Mm -hmm. So 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 either compliment or contention. You have the mm -hmm. choice when you are faced with things in your relationships, in your marriage, whatever that relationship is. You have a choice. You can either grow from it or you can be frustrated. And I just choose to grow. Mm -hmm. um, and if you get frustrated, it's OK, because sometimes you just get triggered and you just right. it, it happens. But always take the time to go back and reflect and, and, and think about, you know, why did that make me so angry? Right. You know, was it really worth was was that action or that circumstance really worth the uh, the, the, the response and the reaction that I gave to it? So. Mm -hmm. That really helped me uh, in, in our relationship. And hopefully, you know, from hearing this and hearing us talk about it, it'll help you. So uh, with that being said, you got anything else? No, sir. So I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight, uh, coming through and uh, hanging out with us. Uh, we'll do this next week again. Well, I don't know if we'll be live next week. We're trying to go live more often. And and like, sorry, sorry for all of the Instagram, which you probably not the Instagram not watching it, but we're trying to do more, you know, yeah, stuff like that. So figure that one out. Figure that out. Go live on Instagram and Facebook mm -hmm. and YouTube all mm -hmm. at the same time. Uh, so uh, just please share this for us. Share this yeah. out. The more people uh, we can reach, the, the merrier. So that's it. Uh, we'll see you next week. This is Glenn and Tanya Coleman reminding you that your marriage, marriage matters. matters. We'll see you next week. Bye.